Welcome to Ron and Nick's Best Friend Podcast. This is a podcast, ladies and gentlemen, that talks... Oh, wait. That you can't live without. That's right. I forgot our tagline. <laughs> that you can't... Wait. Let's do it again. Welcome to Ron and Nick's Best Friend Podcast. I'll give it to you. Podcast you can't live without. And this is the Bible study version. The Bible study version. And we believe the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible because he loves us. Amen. And he wants, he to, wants, have a relationship a, wants to have a relationship with us. And so... We read this in, in concert with him. We're asking him in this particular Bible study through the Gospel of Luke to show us messages about identity. Identity. Our contention about Jesus is he's the only person in the history of the world who ever knew who he was and never, ever forgot. Can I talk about a blessing? Yeah, go ahead. Go. Just as we were recording just now, we got a text from Sam. We were praying about um, a... Cousin of his Cousin who has his. malaria. Yeah. And he had asked us several weeks ago, a few weeks ago, to please pray for him. Listen, the reason I'm doing this is because we recognize that God answers prayers. And sometimes he says no, or sometimes he delays. Or sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's no. I'm not going to do that. But we're going to give praise to him. And he's almost 100%. In fact, his he's 100%. cousin, yeah, is back to exercising. So thanks for letting us know yeah, that, thanks. Sam. Yeah, thanks. That's Sam. Yeah, it's good. It's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, it's great. An answer prayer. An answer prayer, yes. Don't um, forget that. Yeah. We talk about that all the time, too. Well, it's kind of like the same thing we talk about with, uh, how, how is God ever going to talk to you? Number one, you edit out everything that he says. You ask people, well, what is, what is heaven saying to you right now? And you go, oh, I don't know, maybe he, God loves me. And you go, and they say it like, God loves me? And you go, yeah, I mean, is that what you heard <laughs> in your head? Yeah, but I don't know if that's just me. And you go, oh, okay, so... Oh, no. You know, what does God ever say anything that you can't edit out? And the same thing is about answered prayers. Immediately you go, okay, the guy's recovered from malaria, very serious and very serious condition. Now he's recovered from malaria. Okay, was that the Holy Spirit? Was that, was that God answering your prayer? Or was that just, you know, good medicine? Uh, right. Okay, so whatever God does gets edited out. <laughs> and we move on. But we're not moving on. We're saying, God, thank you. Thank Amen. you, and our hearts are grateful for you answering our prayers. Um, back to the Bible study uh, and what we're doing. We're, we're working through the Gospel of Luke, and we're, we're not going verse at a time. We're kind of going a thought at a time, and we're asking the Holy Spirit to interrupt us mm -hmm. wherever there's a place where we see, okay, that's about identity because Jesus knows who he is. Everybody else in the story is trying to figure out who he is and who they are. And you asked me last week, why is it important that you know about your identity? That's right. And, my, and, and what did I say? If you don't know who you are, you don't know how to act. Wow. If you don't know who you are, you don't know how to act. And if you don't know who you are, all you have is an act. All you do is read a script. And who knows who gave you that script? Could be somebody that doesn't even love you. Could be somebody that hates you and wants to use you. So we're going to stop when we see some point of an identity yep on somebody. point right. of identity and where, wherever where that is so we're in gospel we're in the gospel of luke chapter one and we've we've gotten we came all the way down through this thing where zechariah the priest uh who has a wife who's barren and they're they're aged people and uh they haven't had children yet and it's a big deal and he meets those and the angel of the Lord in the temple as he's as he's conducting the funniest line ritual. Was, the funniest line was he was going in the temple. The last thing he thought he thought was he was going to have an encounter with God. Yeah, last place he thought he'd meet God was the temple. So <laughs> there he, he he did. It's just like the rest of us. Um, and so he meets Gabriel. Gabriel tells him all about um, angel this this son that he's going to have named John, who who ends up being John the Baptist. Um, and we, I think we went all the way down through um, basically verse 18 where Zechariah says, hey, how's this going to be? How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. Verse 18, the angel answered, I'm Gabriel and I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. 
this is where I think this is actually where we ended last week. Yes. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace no, from no, among no. the people. We had gone past that because we talked about disgrace and that was uh, an identity of hers. This is the that's the last verse that right. we talked about. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, let's pick up in verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Wow, that's a lot of information in these two verses right here about identity in my eyes. Go ahead. Well, he sends Gabriel to Nazareth. That's a very specific place. There's a town in Galilee. That's a very specific place. And now we get this information about who he's going to see. It's a virgin. She's, she's pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. It's kind of a weird way to introduce a person. Hey, this is, uh, this is my daughter. You know, this is my daughter, Mary. She's a virgin. It's not, <laughs> it, so you immediately you go, okay, uh, there, there's something about that that must be important to the story. Like, that she's being identified as right. a virgin. That's a good point. And she's pledged to be married to a man. So she's not just a virgin. She's a virgin who's engaged to a man named Joseph. And Joseph is a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. So you get a lot of, uh, of identity information right here. So who are these people? Well, we know that Mary is a virgin. We know she's getting ready to get married. We know that J- Joseph is in the line of David. And we know that uh, the virgin's name is Mary. Um, these people, and, and this is something that's important in, in, in our story and the whole story. And, and um, I, I don't know if you're seeing anything in this that you want to, you weigh in any place you I want. I will, one second. Um, you can't forget that when we tell this, you know, the Christmas story, or the gospel story, any story, that the people in the story have, have real lives. And, mm. and, they, and, they, and they have real plans and they have real ideas about who they are. I guarantee you that, that we're, we're being let in on something right here. Here's a snapshot. Just as this is getting ready to happen, here's what you're coming upon. Here's what Gabriel is coming upon. Which remember, Gabriel was the same guy, same angel that was standing there talking to Zechariah in the temple. And now he's getting sent here. And right before this Right before the opening of this, here's the, the freeze frame. This is a young girl. She's getting ready to be married to this guy. They're planning their life. They have, uh, they have this place that they're from. They're from Nazareth. Um, there's, there's planning for a wedding. All this is going on. So who do they believe they are right now in the story? Everything you just said. Yeah. Who do they believe? Like Joseph, we, we find out later, is a carpenter. Right, right. Um, Mary is, uh, I, I guess, she would be a typical a woman getting ready to get married. She's got all those things on her mind, like who's on the guest list and <laughs> and is there going to be enough wine? Right. <laughs> you want to tell that story? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and who do you think you are one second before God shows up in your story? What's your name? Where are you headed? Um. Are you headed for marriage? Are you headed for college? Are you headed for this particular job? Are you, are you headed um, for this place to live? <laughs> Something's funny to me. is like, you know, Nazareth, Nazareth is, a, is not a nice place. You're right. I understand that. Yeah. I'm waiting for you to get to the next line because that, that just, okay, you, you, you set the stage of who, what's going on in their lives with their identities. The next line is this. Greetings. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm going to ruffle some feathers now. Go ahead. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Mary's no different than me. That's going to... Whose feathers are you planning on ruffling? Well... You're going to ruffle my feathers. (laughs) All right. Well, listen, I'm highly favored. You are, you're right. I'm highly favored. Uh, Meaning what? That there's a belief that Mary is this is very, more, very is, super is, special person? Right, right. I'm going to bless you more. Uh, in, in, in my thinking, and, and listen, we can argue it, we can discuss it, debate it. 
there is nothing more special in Mary than there is in me. He loves me just as much as he loves her. He uses me for specific things or allows me to be part of the, 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 the story of my life as he used her to be part of the story. Now, I, I, listen, I, I could get a good argument against that. I mean, I could understand that. How, how could you say, Nick, you are highly favored like Mary? I'm going to say, hey, I'm, she's a child. I'm a child. What's your pushback on that? I don't know that I have a pushback. I think, I think you're well. You're exactly right. We we know that <clears throat> there are certain people and there are certain persuasions. There are certain religions who basically say that Mary, <clears throat> that Mary has to be sinless. That it isn't just that <clears throat> Jesus is sinless. That that Mary is actually sinless too. Okay, that's bull. And that's, well, I mean, look, there, there's there was one person. Yeah, there's only ever one. That's that's sinless, but there's a whole. Well, you understand what happens, right? There, there's this like, well, if God's gonna do this with somebody, they have to be like super duper special, okay? But if you're gonna do that, you've got to go back into the story and go back to um, um, Zachariah and Elizabeth too, because they're highly favored. Sure. So where where does where does that uh, you know end up? in the in the great scheme of things which look that's the essence of religion the essence of religion is i have something that you don't have or that i you know i have my list and i keep it and therefore god loves me more or god get, does things for me that he won't do for you that that's all religion and jesus is coming to blow all that up so it's kind of an insult to jesus to act like mary is better than everybody else if you actually know what jesus was about yeah um Jesus never ever said that his mother was sinless. Um, so highly favored is a uh, is a term that when I when I saw that I said okay that is an identity here, uh, that's identity forget her I'm talking about me. That that when 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 I read that I said why well, I, I am highly favored okay I, I understand it's written about. Uh, I, uh, Paul was highly favored. He was a murderer, and he wrote most of the New Testament. Yeah. Look, there's. I, I would say this about uh, about God about God coming to what's because what we know what's going to happen, right? Is that, that Mary's going to get impregnated with God, and that God's going to grow inside of her, mm. um, in, into you know His human form. Um, that she's just the first one. You know, we get the same thing. Like in principle, what, what happens does that mean? is Jeez. well, it means the Spirit comes and lives inside of you, and comes and lives inside of me and grows and we grow in relationship to him and we become you know more and more full of him i mean we i don't think you can't push that metaphor too far because you, where do you give birth yeah right um to to that um which i'm sure people out there can add their own ideas to that metaphor but you know god comes and lives inside of her god comes and lives inside of me am i any less favored than that um well, you could say this, like she gets the short end of the stick, really. I mean, Jesus comes out of her, and then she has to be alone again. I, I, I don't know. That's that's kind of weird thinking, but you can see how um, how we you know that question. We always say, Who's in a better position, the Virgin Mary or you and me? Because listen, the Virgin Mary is going to give birth to Jesus Christ and be his mom and be able to actually hold God in her arms and nurse him at her breasts. Um, but she is not full of the Spirit of God until she is full of the Spirit of God. She is not indwelled with the Spirit of Jesus Christ until he goes and the Spirit comes to her at Pentecost, just like everybody else. Ooh. Just like everybody else. I'll give you one better. Here, you want to ruffle some feathers? Well, you're ruffling people. Right well, now. I'll ruffle some. I'll, here, I'll really ruffle some feathers. Okay, listen. We're what not if, here to what if Mary was just a? What if she was just a jerk? What if she, there, there's nothing? Say, so she's highly favored. It doesn't say she's very nice. It actually doesn't even say the thing it says about Zachariah and and Elizabeth that they upright. were that they were upright and blameless. It just says she's highly favored. Mary could have been a jerk. Look, if you're watching The Chosen and you see these characters as they're portrayed, I kind of like that show. I think it's really kind of realistic. But they do the same thing. They kind of make Mary out to be like, oh, Mary's like 
and she's she's very intuitive. She's very smart. Like Mary could have been dumb as a bag of hammers. I mean, you don't have to be anything. No. Like, why are you laughing? Mary doesn't have to be anything special to be favored. That's the essence of religion. You're a disruptive teacher. <laughs> nah, I'm not. Well, I'm not trying to disrespect Mary. I'm very glad. Look, I'm very grateful for Mary because if you get down in the story here, you're going to see that she says, let it be unto me, as you have said. That's right. And, and in doing so, one of our own, one, one of our own, one of us, a human being who's yeah. just a human being, is going gonna, is gonna to participate in reversing the, 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 the curse. Because we, we, we said no, Eve said no to God in the, in the garden, and Adam was complicit in that. And in this story, a, a girl, a young girl, is going to say yes, yes to God. Absolutely. She's gonna, and she was free. She was free. She could choose. And it's obvious in the story. Well, that's really important you say that. Because the next line... Well, I what do you think? You. God raped her? Mary, no. I, no, but Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Right. Right. Yeah, it's like, well, what's going to happen here? Right. So remember, remember, she, she, two seconds ago, she thought, hey, uh, I'm getting married. I, right. I'm planning my life. Two seconds ago, and, the, and an angel shows up. And if you think Zechariah was shocked to see a, an angel in the temple, this had to be pretty freaking shocking. Like, well, uh, I'm. Well, and at least Zechariah had some relationship with his wife and then got pregnant. <laughs> Okay, right. so he kind of figured, okay, well, right, that's how it happened. She's pregnant. This one, right? Well, Mary's greatly troubled. His word wonder. In other, well, he hasn't told her anything yet. He all he said is oh, you're, you're highly right. favored. Oh, no, you're right about right? that. Oh, you're right. And he, and he says the Lord is with you. Wonder what that means. Okay, because um, you also know this: the pre the the Holy Spirit is not like a newcomer on the scene. He's always been on the scene. It's just like he hovered on people and around people. He was on David. You can see that in the Psalms, but that's the difference. He's going to come inside of us eventually. So maybe this is saying that the, the Spirit of God was dwelling upon Mary and around her. Mm. Yeah, maybe that's what that meant. Um, she wondered what kind of greeting this would be. Okay, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. All right? In and, other words, God is going to bless you. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the preliminary. Hey, God's really going to bless you. No, you found favor at God. Right. And now you will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. And that's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> wait a second. You know, wait, because I'm planning my wedding here. And rightly so, you go, what, what that might be is, I, I see if you're married, let me see if I can fit that back into my paradigm. Oh, you mean me and Joseph are going to get married, then we're going to have a baby, and we're going to name him Jesus. That's what I would think if I was married. What would you think? Right. And, the, and here's this identity that's yeah, being that, given to. Keep too, going, right? keep going. He will be great. Okay, great. He will be now, called now, the son of the most high. Okay, we're going to tell you exactly who he is. Yeah. Just like you did to. Uh... Yeah. Now you're going to have a, a son. No, he's not, he's not going to be a descendant of David like your husband, right. your husband to be is. He's going to be a son of the most high God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. And then the then the, the thousand hundred thousand dollar question. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin, which which is an awesome question. Which says that she's already thinking, um, is this the, is this fitting into my plan? Is this that doesn't sound like right. a, me and Joseph are doing this. This sounds like something else which says that she's not as dumb as a bag of hammers because something is going on that she's got some discernment about having this interaction with Gabriel. Keep going. This is a great line. Uh, let's see. The Holy Spirit. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Okay. I, I want to... The yeah. Holy Spirit will come on you. That's what mine says. Right. So he is telling her what has not happened yet. Is that correct? Yep. He says it's, it's, he's going to come on you. Yeah. yeah. So the Holy One will be born, will be called the Son of God. Yeah. Well, after that, 
I wonder what her identity is at that point. When you hear God speak to you and tell you all these things, and I'm just not just let's not talk about Mary, let's talk about us. I mean, when when you hear certain things of God, how does that change your identity? Or we can just go back to Mary. What do you think? I mean, that that I guess is her new identity. In an instant, she changes. Yeah, I mean, she was planning the wedding. One day, getting married, living in Nazareth. Not Nazareth. Uh, no, nope, Nazareth. Yeah, Nazareth. Yep. And in one instant, one morning, one evening, whenever that happened, she has a complete new identity. Yeah, because she's having an encounter with God. That's right. That's ch- that changes everything. That's it. Having an encounter with God. Like, who do you think you are? This is what happens. That's right. This is what happens in the story. And this is this is pretty cool because as this story unfolds, people are going to run into God in the flesh, in Jesus. And he knows who he is. He has this identity. No one gave it to him. It was his before he was even conceived here. <laughs> you know, physically, he's there because he's the preexistent son of God. And so when Mary comes into contact with the messenger of God, in this case, Gabriel, um, she is reoriented and has a whole new direction and a whole new name. Now she's going to be Mary, the Virgin Mary, the son of the most, uh, the, 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 the mother of the son of God. That's going to be her name now. And it's going to have all kinds of impl- implications. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Ron and Nick's Best Friend Podcast, a show for anyone who needs a friend. Join us every week right here as we talk about who? Our best friend, the Holy Spirit. And if you want more information about him or the show, you can find it at www.ronandnicksbestfriend.com. And don't forget to subscribe.